guys, this is Taylor and Wrigley and welcome back to our channel. Uh, today's video is going to be over baby led weaning. So um, if you're interested in that, please subscribe and give a thumbs up and keep watching. So baby led weaning has been a huge recommended um, video that I should do because we chose that to do with Wrigley. Um, so here I have some like typed up notes, um, some things that I would researched before, um, just because I was, it was something new, um, you never really hear about it because you just automatically, um, just go to baby food. And that was something that I didn't want to do. I wanted him to be, um, introduced to textures and to really not be a picky eater. So, um, we chose baby led weaning. I did a lot of research. Um, so that's one thing that I highly recommend you do as do a lot of research. So, um, but hopefully this video right here will help you cause it's going to be a little bit more detailed than the other videos that I had watched. Um, because I have quite a bit of information here, but I'm not going to go all over it. But, um, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment um, section and I will get do my best to get to them promptly. So um, if you're not familiar with baby led weaning, it you might have seen it as BL. <laughs> you can see him, he was like, ugh. Um, don't mind his cough, he's got like some congestion and stuff going on. So he's been coughing when he's eating because he's got, you know, just the, all that stuff going on. So. Um, if you're not familiar with baby led weaning, you may have also seen it being called uh, BLW. Um, but baby led weaning is where you just skip baby food altogether. Um, you don't you don't give him, give them any at all. You just literally start with baby or table food. Uh, yeah, is it good? Uh, yeah, uh, I don't want it. You can have it. Um, but you just, you skip baby food altogether and you just go into table food. Um, so your baby must meet some requirements to do baby led weaning. I know that kind of sounds like, oh, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't act to be a doctor, but there are some requirements to follow for your baby to ingest um, you know, table food. So, um, your baby must be at least six months old. So, um, I know one of the videos that I went off of on YouTube a lot because, um, she explained it very well and, um, it wasn't really that detailed, but she did a good job explaining it. Um, her baby was like five and a half months or five months or something like that. But um, they need to be as close to six months as possible. Now, I know that if you start with baby food, um, pediatricians may recommend you start around four or five months old. Um, the research that I did shows that your baby's gut is still open. Um, it's hard for them to digest food in general around that age. And honestly, the only thing your baby needs up until like a year old is formula or breast milk. Um, my PD, my, our first pediatrician, and we loved her. We only switched because it was closer to home. Um, she told me that I could breastfeed Wrigley for a year if I wanted to. Um, and I really liked that. She didn't shove the whole solids down my throat. Um, because I think he was like five months old or something like that. And she had just asked me if we had started solids. And I said, no, you know, we won't, I have done a lot of research and I want to do baby led weaning. Um, and she was perfectly okay with that. She said, I mean, Taylor, if you just want to breastfeed him up until a year, year old, you can. Um, now we only breastfeed in the morning and at, oh, thank you for those grummy hands. <laughs> <laughs> He's so rotten. Um, but now we only breastfeed in the mornings and at night. Um, and I know he's only, he'll be 11 months old in a, a couple weeks, but we've actually transitioned him to just almond milk. 
um, which he's done really good with. So we've just stuck with that instead of buying formula. Um, he's not allergic to anything, so um, it was okay and he seems to enjoy it. Okay, so back to um, back to your milestones. Um, they must be they must be able to sit up on their own for 60 seconds. So that's with no help, that's with no falling over. They must sit up. Um, so they need to be the baby can be sat on the ground and stay upright with no assistance for one minute. Um, that just helps with posture, you know, that helps um, when they do digest that food, it's going straight down. If they were like all slumped over, you know, it would be harder. Um, and probably easier, but I don't, I personally don't know because we started when he was like seven months. So, but it probably would be harder for them to get that down if they're all slumped down and they can't sit on their own. Um, another one, so the third one is the, um, the grasp. They must be able to pick up the item and take it to their mouth, um, which they call pincer grasp, but I just say you know, they can pick up their own food without, um, without your help. Um, so, and then the loss of tongue thrust reflex. Now, this is where a lot of people think that their babies don't like, um, baby food because they think that their baby spits it out, that they don't like it at all, but that's not the case. So say you start solids around um, four or five months old and you're feeding your baby and your baby's just pushing that food out of their mouth. You're like, oh, you know, they don't like okay. it. Let's try something else. That's actually the tongue thrust reflex. Um, they don't really lose that until like six or seven months, <laughs> six or seven months old. So I actually did um, around, Wrigley was like six and a half months. I actually did give him some baby food, sweet potatoes, just to see if he had lost that, and he did. So then I knew that like, okay, it was, it's okay to give him solid food. But that's where most people um, get confused and think that their baby doesn't like that food. And that's really not the case. Um, it's just that they haven't lost that tongue thrust reflex. So even if you don't choose baby led weaning, you can just remember that, that, you know, they could really, they could really like that uh, food and you think that they don't, but that's really just their tongue thrust reflex. So something that's something to just, just to keep in mind. Um, those are really the milestones that they need to be able to baby led, to start baby led weaning. Um, I've had a ton of people ask me about his teeth. He actually started talking about posture. <laughs> he actually started around six and a half, seven months. We started offering him, offering him food that we were eating. And um, their first few months, they're not eating a whole lot. And that's okay because they're getting their nutrition from breast milk or formula. Um, but you can see that this bib that he has on, that whole thing would be full, like the first couple months. Um, baby led weaning is actually a learning experience. It's learning for them to be able to grab their own food, um, learn new textures, learn how to chew. That's a huge, um, that's a huge learning experience in baby led weaning. Um, so teeth are irrelevant in baby led weaning. You do not need them. He actually, okay, he's almost 11 months and he just yeah. cut his um, first tooth last week and he's getting the second one in. So if you think, oh, my baby don't have any teeth, I can't give them that, um, that is not the case at all because he eats meat, mac and cheese, um, corn, green beans like he he's a kid he literally eats anything you put in front of him i'm getting ready to give him graham crackers um so it's it's a rel you don't have to worry about their teeth they are learning to chew and they will um they will learn how to uh chew any food that you put in their mouth uh so that's another thing that i will get to 
um, when we get to like the gagging and choking part of this. Um, so one thing that you definitely want to do in if you're choosing baby led weaning is include them in family meals. Um, that was a huge, a huge thing with me is I obviously didn't want him to be a picky eater. I wanted him to be included in um, textures early on. And um, you may see him, like he's eating a graham cracker. If he chews off a piece, he may gag. It's okay. Like, we'll get to that. So, don't freak, don't freak out if you're watching this video. Um, but I wanted to enjoy my meal. I wanted my husband to enjoy his meal. And I wanted Wrigley to enjoy his. So, trying to eat my food, Anthony eat his, and try to feed Wrigley, that's just so stressful to me. Like, making sure that even when we're out in restaurants, like, okay, I'll take a bite, he take a bite. I'll take a bite, he take a bite. I just wanted us all to eat together. So, that is a huge thing. So, when you have dinner, um, include your baby. So, we're not a family that sits at the table and eat our food. We sit in the living room, we take the high chair in the living room, and we eat together in there. That's the kind of family that we are. Um, and that's okay. That's how we are. So, um, but we include him. You know, we take him in there. We let him eat. Um, when we first started baby led weaning, we let him, we only let him have um, dinner. And then we moved up to having breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner. That's kind of like what he's at now. Um, another thing this is, this, I actually put this down in my notes. So, many parents begin with one meal and work their way up to three meals and two snacks by the time baby is a year old. Um, so, he was actually just eating dinner for, what? I don't know, a, you like your graham crackers? A couple months, um, actually, he was just, he was just eating dinner. And that was fine with us because I was still producing enough breast milk to cover his um, day at the babysitter's. So, that was okay with us. Um, don't put that whole thing in your mouth, please. See, that kind of thing still freaks me out a little bit, but that's the whole point of it. He's learning. He's, learned how, he's learning how to take a bite, um, the correct amount, size of a bite. Um, he's learning still. I mean, we've been doing this for four months, and he's still learning how to decide um what in a, is an appropriate bite for him to eat. So, um, another great thing to baby led weaning that you want to kind of stick with is either if you're breastfeeding, nurse, if you're pumping, give a bottle, or formula, give a bottle at least 30 to 60 minutes before a meal. That ensures them that that is where their nutrition comes from and they're not getting just full on, uh, table food. They're still getting, they will get their milk, they'll get full with that, and then, you know, they'll um, have their lunch, and they won't just be eating all people food. I think he needs a drink, you know, eating crackers. Um, so, nurse or offer formula 30 to 60 minutes before, um, before you eat. Um, another no. do not this was this was is a still a very hard no. one for family to understand um but it's okay because i know it freaks some people out um but do not feed them let them feed themselves and figure it out it is okay if your baby's not eating anything like that is perfectly okay no. um they will figure it out just offer it to them you don't have to offer a whole lot just offer them a little bit on their plate and just let them play with it and they'll eventually figure out how to grab it take it to their mouth it may fall get you one of these bibs i got it on amazon it's the greatest thing ever um but always place food on the tray and let them take the lead you should never put food in their mouth um it is baby led weaning after all so um, if you are preloading utensils, you should load them and place them on the tray and do not hand them to them. So, Wrigley is, um, yeah, Wrigley is almost 11 months old. We still haven't offered him utensils. Um, 
I just play it, lay it on his plate and let him let him figure it out. Well, so I'm, my plan um, is to start giving him utensils around a year old. Um, that's what I'm planning on getting rid of the bottle. Um, we're starting to offer him the sippy, sippy cup all the time. So, um, yeah, I already said this one. But don't expect them to eat as soon as you put the food in front of them. Because that's not how it works. Let them play around with it. Um, they will figure out how to feed themselves. Um, they might get a little frustrated. They may, um, start crying and it's okay. Just let them figure it out. I just want, I have absolutely loved doing baby led weaning. I am one of those moms that I'm very laid back. Yes, we all worry, but I'm very laid back. I kind of let him do his own thing. Um, I let him explore the house. You know, I'm not one that freaks out about a whole lot. Yes, you're always worried that your baby's going to, you know, choke or whatever on real um, table food. But you kind of just have to sit on your hands and just don't underestimate your baby because they are so smart and they know exactly what their body is supposed to do. So don't ever under, under, underestimate them. Um... So another thing is um, these graham crackers you might have seen, they don't have honey in them. So they're just the Kroger brand. Um, don't give your baby honey under. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, he's just got so much mucus going on that he's been coughing and everything. So when he eats, it just it's all in there. And um, But don't give your baby honey or uncooked food, um, not cooked, not raw, not baked in, nothing. Don't give honey at all. Um, there's a kind of poisoning that they can get. So we haven't gave him any honey. We don't really eat honey anyway. So, um, so you want to limit the sodium and sugar. Um, I wrote this one down because I was told that kind of later on, but, um, I give him whatever <laughs> he's had sugar. Anything you eat is going to have sugar and salt in it. Unless, uh, unless I don't know. I don't know, but it's going to have, it's going to have salt and sugar in it. Um, I just cleaned these floors guys. So this isn't, this isn't gross. Five second rule. <laughs> I'm that mom. Um, but I just give him whatever. Like, my grandma watches him right now, and she gives him ice cream. Like, I don't care. I don't care. He's eating it. Um, the only thing that I limit really is his uh, juice, just because of the simple fact um, of his teeth. I don't... Um, the only time we really give him... Will you not drop that, please? Please. <laughs> Um, the only time we actually give him food is when, um, if he hasn't like had a bowel movement or something is the only time that we really give him apple juice and we really dilute it with water. Other than that, he just has his almond milk, vitamin D milk, um, and water. Um, and I have found out that when we started baby led weaning that his poops were really hard if I didn't offer him water during his meal. Um, I know they say limit it, but I just kind of let him um, drink as much. I would fill his cup and I'd let him drink it because if not, his poops were really hard. So I didn't want that. Um, and he's he's been fine. He's okay. I really didn't offer that much water up until like a couple months ago. So he's okay. Um, Let's see. It, see, uh, this says do limit the water intake. Um, these are kind of some notes that I've wrote. I've wrote notes down. I've highlighted. Um, this is from my research. Um, so, another thing that I just cleaned these floors, baby. I just cleaned these this morning. Um, I know a lot of people are asking, well, how do you, do you cut them up in little pieces? Uh, do you give them strips? Do you give them really soft things? 
So um, you want to cut them in like strips of your pinky. Um, see these little crunchies he loves and they're just like a quick snack. You know, they're like half of your pinky. So they're easier to pick up and for them to hold to get the appropriate bite. Um, he likes to just shove the whole, the whole thing in his mouth. But um, some, you know, some kids will just take a bite and get the appropriate bite. He shoves the whole thing in his mouth, but you know, whatever. Um, so you wanna make sure that they're in strips of your pinky. That way they can learn to pick up and to like gnaw on them. Cause that's what they'll do for the first couple of months. They're kind of just gnaw on it. Um, Cause I think his first meal that we gave him was chicken and avocado. I think he, um, he didn't, he just played in the avocado all over his, all over his tray, but he, I cut the pieces of chicken and like kind of strips like this and he picked it up and he just gnawed on it. So, um, now that he's older and he's learned how to chew, I kind of just tear it into pieces and he's okay. I know they say that that can be a choking hazard, um, of the, cutting it up in smaller pieces will make it easier for them to choke, but he knows how to chew, so he's he's all right. Um, uh, ever a lot of, of the research that I did shows to take a CPR class, which personally I didn't. Um, I was a lifeguard for I don't know, like five, six years. Um, so I'm very familiar with CPR. Um, my husband takes a CPR for work. So, um, we're both very familiar with CPR, so we didn't think it was, um, that necessary to take one, but if you're not familiar with CPR, I, um, I really suggest go find a class and take one for sure. Um, okay, so if your family is, um has like allergic reaction or has a lot of allergies or is allergic to foods and things. Um, you can limit, you know, what you give them. We didn't with him because me and Anthony aren't allergic to anything. Um, we figured he wasn't. So we just gave him whatever. But if your family is, I would offer it um, and then watch them. And if you do offer food that your other family members or you are allergic to, um, I recommend giving them in the morning, not at night. That way you can watch them throughout the day and see if they are allergic also. Um, but we give him everything under the sun. So, um, in reason. But we give, we give him almond milk so he's not allergic to nuts. Um, he eats peanut butter. You know, I know that's a big, that's a big thing right now is there's a lot of kids that are allergic to uh, nuts. But um, there's a lot of studies that show if you introduce high allergy foods between the age of 6 and 11, 12 months, it is likely that they won't become allergic. So that's why I've literally just given him um, really whatever he wants. So, um, and he could eat forever. Um, and then... And that's really not necessary to say because I don't put any food in mesh, um, mesh feeders or anything like that. No, just feed it to them. They'll be okay. Okay. So that's kind of just like the introduction. Um, I know there are, I'm getting ready to get into the point of choking and gagging. So those two are completely different. Uh, there is a total difference in to gagging and choking. Wrigley has never choked. Um, we've given him meat. We've given him um, corn and yeah. green beans. Um, he loves green beans. He'll eat a whole large side of green beans from KFC. So, um, it's, it's just completely different. Um, the reason why they gag is when babies are born, their reflex is closer to the opening of their mouth rather than 
What are you doing, Willis? Rather than us adults, our gag reflexes are closer to the back of our mouth. Now, as your baby grows, it'll move further back. So, your kid, if you do baby led weaning, your kid is going to gag. They're going to gag. You have to sit on your hands and you just have to let them figure it out. I'm going to tell you a complete honest thing right now. We got, um, he loves chicken alfredo. He loves spaghetti. So, we got chicken alfredo from Pizza Hut one night. And I was trying to go around the chicken because they're chunks this big. Oh my gosh, Wrigley. You got food all over me. They're chunks that big. And I was trying to go around them. I was trying not to give him any. I was just trying to give him the noodles and um, just trying to give him the noodles. And we were sitting there eating and he starts gagging. Gagging that he's never done before. And you want to bet that chicken came back up. He did not choke. He figured it out and he gagged it back up. And I'm not joking. It was that big around. Like it was huge. And I like was like, that was the first time that I had ever been scared. Um, but he was fine. He figured it out. They're smart. They're, the babies are so smart. It's, it's incredible. Um, so if you choose to do baby led weaning, sit on your hands. Let your baby learn and figure it out, especially with choking. You will know the difference between choking and gagging. You'll know. Um, so, gagging um, is when your baby opens the mouth and it leans forward and they're ga they're gagging. They're it looks it looks bad, <laughs> but um, you all right? But it's really it's really not. I'm gonna scoot you over a little bit. There we go. Um, so, child will open mouth and thrust tongue forward. And then their face may appear bright red. So, that's when your baby, you know your baby's choking. Or, sorry. That's when you know your baby is gagging. That's when you know your baby is gagging. Choking, your child will turn blue. Your child will turn blue. They can't make any noises. Um... Your, when your baby gags, they will cough and they'll, um, if your baby coughs, that is a great sign. What? Yeah, that's a great sign. So, when your baby's choking, your baby doesn't make any noises at all. So, know that. <laughs> your baby is going to gag. I'm just going to keep saying that throughout the video. Your baby's going to gag because that's one of the things that I have gotten, like, such feedback on. That and him not having teeth to chew his food. Their gums are so hard and strong that it is, it's crazy. Um, so, if, when your baby is choking, child may begin coughing if it is a partial blockage. That is a good sign that they are clearing their pass, their airway. Um, if your baby is not making any noises at all, your baby is choking. If your baby's making noise, he's just gagging. They're going to lean forward. They're going to gag that food out of their mouth. And it is okay. Just watch them. Um, where, re where he has been sick and um, had all that mucus and everything... In the back of his throat, he has coughed and gagged more in the last two weeks than he has this whole journey of baby load weaning. So, I've just kind of just like when I'm eating, I just sit there and watch him and make sure that, you know, he's okay. He's making noise and he, he just continues just to grab his food and eat even when he's in the middle of a cough. So, um, when your baby is gagging, do not interfere with them. That's another thing. I know parents want to like stick their finger down their mouth. Do not do that because you are more likely to put, when you put your finger in their mouth and try to grab that, you're more likely to shove that food further down in their mouth. So, um, just let them figure it out. If they turn blue and don't make any noise, then your baby is, your baby's choking. But, you know, I've given Wrigley everything and we have not had... We've never dealt with, dealt with that. So, um, 
So, you know, gagging is 100% normal and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Just let it happen. Um, when a baby is gagging, they will often lean forward with their mouth open and their tongue with a thrust. They will open or they will often turn bright red. Sometimes it may even look as though they are turning a silent shade of or a slight shade of blue. With gagging, they are able to make noise, breathe, and cough. Please never interfere with gagging. So, um, why all the gagging and how long does it last? Um, that was another question that I've gotten a lot. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We're only, a l we're like, what, five months into this? And to this day, he still, if he eats something and he doesn't chew it correctly or it's a bigger piece and he didn't chew it enough, he, he's going to gag. And you, we've just got to let him go. Like, he knows what he's supposed to do. He knows that, he knows how he knows how to eat. So, um, but your baby is more likely to gag a lot in the beginning because they're trying new foods. They're, um, learning how to, with that food in their mouth, it's just going around in their mouth. They're learning how to chew. Um, so they may find a piece or when they put a piece in their mouth, they may not chew it and they might just automatically swallow it and they possibly gag so um so that they're more more likely going to gag in the beginning now regularly sick he's gagged more this last week than he has the whole the whole time so um just you know just know that gagging is good gagging is good and it's just a part of the process um so if your baby is choking um, their head should be slightly lower than the, oh, sorry. You will pick up your baby, place them over your arm or leg, face down, supporting their head in your hand. Um, their head should be slightly lower than the rest of their body. You will then perform five back blows between their, their, sh um, shoulder blades. And you will want to make sure you are performing the back blows hard enough to dislodge the object. So, just kind of like the, if you're choking, just, you know, you're just going to pat them well, you know, make sure it's hard enough to get the um, object back up. We personally haven't had any, um, anything wrong. We've never had to deal with the choking. But again, um, take a CPR class, take a, take a class to learn um, how to, how to prevent that or how to help that if your baby does um, choke. But, yeah. So, I wrote down that please keep in mind choking is rare. It may happen to, or it can happen to anybody. It can. It's not, I'm not telling. What's up with your beanie? Are you out of milk? Um, here, we're almost done. We're almost done. Um. So it can happen to anybody. So just don't think, oh, well, this will never happen to me. You know, it never happened to my kid. I, I didn't think that. Like, I knew that it was a possibility that, you know, it could happen. Um, to, you know, to help prevent choking, make sure those pieces are cut and your pinky, the length of your pinky. Just make sure that um, really, I mean, that should... Um, if you're serving food that is known as a choking hazard, just make sure you're you're serving it appropriately. Um, you know, uh, like my kid likes to stick a hole yeah. crunching in his mouth. Like he, he's never choked on him, and he's always done that. He's always he's always taken the crunchies and he always has stuck them in their mouth. So. Um, some things that, you know, are choking hazard are whole nuts, popcorn, um, hard candies, gummies. Those things are, you know, choking hazards. Um, things that you can cut into pieces for them to chew is like cheese sticks, um, cherries, carrots, tomatoes, hot dog sausages. He's yet to have a hot dog, so I haven't did that. Um, he's had blueberries. And he's, you know, he's done, he's done fine with, um, those. So, 
sorry about all these notes, but I just wanted to make sure that I'm doing this video and that it's thorough and that you guys understand like that it, it that it is uh, it is a process. It is a um a thing you have to learn with them. What Bobby? We're almost done. We're almost done. Just hold on. Um and then like corn and um peas that we've give him and rice they're okay because you know they're really really little so they're more than likely just going to go down and he's not going to um choke but i highly 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 suggest giving your baby multiple um, or a variety of food don't limit their food offer them anything and everything that you eat um that will you know get them into the habit of eating things that have different textures. And um, that was a huge thing for me. I wanted him to eat textures early on because I didn't want a picky eater. I'm not a picky eater. Anthony's Anthony's okay. Yeah. There's some things that he used to not eat that he'll eat now. Um, so for, offer a variety of food that will help. That'll help so much. Um, so, you just kind of just, you have to trust your baby. It's, it's a learning process and it's, it's a trust. Um, we have learned to, to trust Wrigley and he has been great with it. Um, I will do it with our next baby. Um, and then, you know, if they're gagging or choking, just, I know it's your baby and you're going to freak out, but just try and stay calm because you know, when you're all worked up, it kind of makes the situation a little bit worse. So just stay calm. Um, do the do the appropriate things that you need to do, and everything will be okay. Um, then I I thought this I read this um, in one of the other places that I did research. The best thing you can do is just continue trying. If you need to take a day or two off to calm your nerves, that's okay if baby's under one. Um, some people find it more helpful to just jump right back in. That is okay too. So if you've had a couple rough days or something, um, just take a few days and just give them formula or breast milk. It's okay. Um, food before one is just for fun. They're learning. Um, and I've lived by that this whole first year that um, it's just for fun. It is just for fun. And he's, do you want more milk? Minute. Give me this, I'll give you more milk. Um, but just know that, you know, it's all for fun. The first year there were, okay, you're gonna have to get the straw cut because that one won't come off. Um, sorry, I know. I said cold too. He doesn't care if it's cold, hot, whatever. Um, okay, so another thing that I wanted to talk about, if you have already, if your baby has already started baby food and you're wanting to switch to baby lead weaning, um, this is something that um, I know, I have a Facebook group of moms um, that may have started, you know, using baby food first and now they wanna switch to baby lead weaning. Um, you know, baby must, me all the signs, um, you know, six months old, unassisted sitter, develop the grass to, um, there you go, um, and the tongue thrust reflex and interested in foods. Hey, that way you can't, you can't do the straw like that, where he's still figuring out the straw. Um, so if you have started, if you've started baby food and you're wanting to do baby lead weaning, take a break from the solids. It's not going to hurt your baby. Food before one is just for fun. Um, you can't lift it up like that, Goofy. It's not going to come out. Um, take a break for like 10 to 14 days and then start offering table food. Um, if baby is not six months yet, stop all foods and wait till they are six months. 
Um, I'm not familiar with this because we started right out of the get-go with um, baby led weaning. But um, now this says if your baby is older than eight and a half months old right now and or has been doing traditional weaning, which is smashed up, you know, food, um, for longer than three months, it is safest to continue with traditional weaning. So um, we didn't have anything... We didn't have that problem, you know. Um, we just we just started out from the beginning. Um, another thing is with family and daycare. Um, so I know, oh, I know, family freaks out, and um, thankfully my family has been very supportive. They have actually absolutely loved it because they can feed Ravenly whatever they want. Uh, so they have loved it and we've loved doing it. So we haven't had any, um, we haven't had any problems, but if you're somewhere in your family, this is what I've read. Um, I've just did, I did research for this video again, um, because I kind of couldn't remember everything because it's been, you know, a few months, but, um, if you have explained baby led weaning and family still isn't supportive, it is okay to skip meals occasionally. Sometimes we have to pick our battles, especially when it comes to the safest of our babies. Um, so, I mean, that's basically it. You know, if your family doesn't support you, just kind of skip meals or don't have meals where you have to feed your baby too. You know, that's just how I kind of, I'm just thankful that my family has been very supportive and they've loved it and we've loved it. So, um, so for daycare, um, I, when he was going to the babysitter right now, he's going to my grandma. So you have to talk to them, you know, you need to explain to them what I'm kind of explaining to you. Um, so this says, talk to your provider. Um, you do not have to send food to daycare until you and your caregiver are comfortable with feeding your baby. Now, when I talked to our babysitter, she was okay with it. Um, you know, they've kind of had to sit on their hands too, because they, I don't think that she had another baby who did baby led weaning. So, um, I'd send Lunchables. <laughs> I'd send Lunchables with crackers and meat and cheese, and he would do fine with them. And then, you know, applesauce. He ate applesauce a lot. Um, then, if you are sending food from home, pre-cut it and let them know that is how babies should be having it and not alter it. So, and um, our babysitter didn't, you know, she... Now, the Lunchables, they weren't, like, pre-cut or anything. She just, like took the crackers and cracked them in half and gave to him. And then the cheese, um, just, you know, folded it and cut it in half really is just kind of like what she did. Um, make a detailed food for babies eats and how to serve. I real I didn't do that. Um, I kind of just, when I explained it to her, I just gave it to her and they kind of just, they were just okay with it, but talk to your, um, caregivers and let them know that this is what you've chose. Um, and I mean, if you have to, and they don't, or they're not comfortable, you can send your baby food. I would, I would say lunch would be okay. Um, send your puffs and your crunchies. Wrigley loves those; they're the quickest little snack. Um, I've tried them; they're really not that bad. So they're a quick snack for them to eat, um, and you can send to the sitter until they are comfortable with baby led weaning. So. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically the gist. So, um, make sure that, so I'll go, what'd you drop it for? Um, so to start baby led weaning, baby must show all signs of readiness. They need to be at least six months old. They need to have developed the, um, pincer grasp to grab the food. Uh, they must be, they must be able to sit for one minute unassisted, have lost the tongue thrust reflex, and interested in foods. So, um, that's basically, that's basically it, guys. You just, I know a lot of people stress out about the choking and the gagging and the no teeth. It's okay. Like, it's, it's really okay. Like, Wrigley has not had teeth this whole time up until now, and they're, like, barely showing. It's his two bottom teeth. And he eats everything. He eats he eats meats and mac and cheese and um, spaghetti and Alfredo, broccoli, um, french fries, 
the kid eats everything. And um, there's, this is just what I have read. This is, I'm, you know, your kid is more likely to not be a picky eater if you do baby led weaning because you're offering textures at a young age. So, um, and I think that is probably true. I think that's true because, um, sorry about the light. I'm in my kitchen and I have a window right beside me. Um, I think that's going to be true because he eats anything and everything you put in front of him. Like he, he doesn't care what it is. And if he finds it on the floor the next day, he'll eat it. He ate dirt the other night downstairs because I think he thought it was food. So, um, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Um, I will drop my email below in the description if you want to email me any questions. Um, I will be glad to answer those for you. I'm going off mine and Wrigley and Anthony's experience with baby led weaning. So, um, I, can, I, will, I would love to help you any way I possibly can because we love baby led weaning. And I think it should be a, a thing where people know about it. Um, cause I know there's a lot of people that don't know about baby led weaning. So if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, and we will be doing, you know, other videos come down the road. It's been a while since we did a video. So, um, I plan on doing like one every week and we're trying to get back to that. It's just, you know, with kids, it's just hectic. Um, but if you want to join my Facebook group. It is called Mainstream Mamas. If you go up to the search box in Facebook and you write Mainstream Mamas, you'll more than likely find it. There's only like 150 people in the group. So it's a good small group and you normally get an answer when you post or, you know, opinions. So um, like this video, subscribe, and thank you guys. Give me what, give me your thoughts in the comments if you've enjoyed this video. So Thank you. Have a great day and we will see you next time.